Okay, we're back. Round three. Let's see how we do here. Uh, and keep in mind, uh, coming off that last match, we're still working on getting our confidence up, uh, trying to find our stroke. We are experimenting a little bit with pacing and timing and specifically number of sort of pre-strokes before executing. And so, I've, yeah, I've been experimenting a little bit with sort of a one, two, shoot kind of approach. And sometimes that works out really well for me if I'm already in stroke and feeling confident, I can maintain it that way. But pay attention to that in this match, it's gonna come up a lot. Uh, the other thing I'll say I noticed in, in like just post here in editing is that the scorecard is inaccurate at a certain point, but the video does show the proper course of the games. We'll just pay attention to the score as we go, but um, good break to open up here. Good cue ball, center of the table. We just got to make sure that we float down for the two. Leave a good line on the two to either come in one rail, back up for the three this way. You could certainly come with inside over to this side. Um, coming in with outside could get a little touchy. You're not really likely to run into the eight. You have a lot of options for floating down for the three here. That's good speed. <clears throat> Brings it up nicely. And lots of options for the four. Really anywhere in this area of the table is going to work out fine for the four ball to get over for the five. I'm checking my line on the five. If I want to get underneath it and play it in the side. And basically just making that five ball is going to give you natural shape on the six. We don't want to get too much ahead of ourselves here though. We got to get good on the four. We're fine on the four, it's, it's glued to that bottom rail, but just make a good thin cut on it. Holding it can be a little tricky. You gotta make sure that you give it enough space to, or enough speed to make it to the pocket. And I think what I'm looking at here is coming into the four back up table and getting above the five ball instead of trying to hold it, which is a better decision. You're gonna give more speed to the cue ball, more speed to the four, more likely to make it, but you have to pay attention to your cut angle here. Yeah, I let up on that stroke a little bit, missed the cut angle on the four. Classic uh, paying too much attention to the shape kind of situation. My opponent's got to come to the table with a long cut on the four. Gets down, kind of, kind of pushes out a little bit, ends up overcutting it here, and catches a bit of a roll. He leaves me up behind the six, frozen on the six, to the point where the hit on the four is really complicated. So there's no one rail past the eight. There's no one rail into this side past the six, because the six is blocking. And what I'll start to do is look at the angle between the six and the cue ball, where the cue ball is frozen on the six. It prevents the natural sort of path that you might try for a two or three rail kick onto the four. And that's what I start to look at over here and kind of shaking my head and sizing up the kicks. And the more I look at it, the more I realize that there's no good kick shots available here. I'll give it one more look to see if maybe there's a way that I can kind of come easy into it with some spin and let the spin open up the angle, but it just doesn't look good to me. So I've got to consider Something, something a little creative here. Is there a different way to get to the four ball? And I commit to a jump shot off the nose of the rail. So jacking up, pop it into the rail, make a good hit on the four. Cue ball tracks towards the corner, so we got a bit of a roll and that it didn't scratch. But that is, that's a really nice way to make a hit on that four ball. And I came away from that one feeling pretty good. That not only did I know about that shot, shot but I was able to properly execute it here. And I think he tried for the back cut on the four. Leaves me long, not quite straight in on the four. And again, the choice would be to try to hold the cue ball, cutting in the four, hold the cue ball below the five, get natural shape on the six by making the five on the side. Looking at my lines, and then I look at what happens if you let the stroke out here and try to roll around and get above the five after making the four. And that one might feel better 
when you're, when you're trying to build up some confidence, let the stroke out a little bit, come all the way through the ball, and get back above the five. I get down pretty well. I'm not settled because the table's right behind me. You can even see the camera gets bumped because the surface of the table is right where I'm queuing. I really should have stood back up here, but just decided to go for it. I felt good about my aim. And I come around table. The speed was good. I think coming even further might have been nice to get straighter on the five. But this is still a very workable shot. You want to slow roll this in. Use the rail to kind of guide your angle. Imagining the five gliding down along that rail. And you're always going to get shape on the six. Stroke's looking a little snatchy here. Yeah. Kind of a weird backswing. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I didn't feel fully settled on that five ball. He steps up and kind of kind of jabs at it. Um, I think was probably worried too much about getting back up on the six ball. It looked like maybe some outside spin probably caused that issue. Here's another really good opportunity to settle. You're all but perfectly straight in on the five. Natural shape on the six, you'll be able to come easily around for the eight. Let's check my strokes. One, two, and fire. And that's what's been getting me. That's the pattern that I noticed here is there's there's no reason to miss that shot. <laughs> Just like we missed that nine ball in the last game. I'm letting that stroke, that aiming, and that timing kind of get the better of me. So he's able to come back around for the six, just natural shape that the five was a hanger at that point. But what I start to do in this match is reassess my timing and my approach. And he's got just a couple ducks in a row here to put him on the board. Drift down easily for the nine. There's a lot of innings in this game, a lot of back and forth, a lot of unnecessary innings. Puts that one away. Thanks for being here. Do the YouTube stuff to help us out. Um, love to see new subscribers and new people commenting. It's a lot of fun for me to talk about this stuff with you guys. So thanks for checking us out. Opponent breaks. Got a pretty good cue ball. Um, gets, a, gets a bad roll with a seven getting in the way. So he's got to consider a kick on the two ball here. And there's a pretty natural one rail kick to the bottom short rail up into the two. And I've gone back and looked at this. That's a bad hit. He, while he made good contact with the two, there was no rail after the two. And I didn't notice it. For whatever reason, I, you know, maybe I was looking away. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what was happening for me in that moment. That's definitely a bad hit. And if I had been watching that, I certainly would have asked my opponent about it or just, or just called that out. Um, but in this case, I come up to the table thinking I just got to shoot this two ball. There's not a great back cut on the two, so I decide to thin it and use the three and the nine as a bit of a wall, which is a good play. You want to just try to get ball in hand here. And especially after that last game where you missed the five ball, you got to do something to get yourself back in a good mindset. He comes up and he's got kind of a, kind of a tough kick. Um, I don't think... He can really spin behind the three to get a hit on the two. Maybe that's what he's trying. He did. Okay, he had plenty. He's able to make a good hit on the two with a rail that time. And now I've got full access to the two. You could certainly cut the two in the corner up here. And the cue ball is going to want to come kind of into the point and back down, depending on your spin. I naturally line up. I'm starting to just trust my first instinct going with that. Thin the two into the side and send the cue ball all the way around the table. Kind of the natural line. You have to spin it to try to get around the six. Good spin. Thin the six. Comes all the way around and into the three. You can see my opponent's face with a little like nod of approval. Um, using the full table to get at least under the three was my intention. Got a nice jelly roll out of the bump on the three. And we're starting to line up. I think I like this better. The one, two, three, and then shoot feels more comfortable for me. And once I center in on that, I'm going to start to to hit them a lot better. I'm going to line up on this four. I'm a little off angle, not quite straight in. 
And I decided to stand back up because um, someone was walking around just like saying goodnight to people and, and chatting with some friends. Get back down on this a second time. A person's still walking around. And that's just, that's silly. I should have stood back up. That, that stuff does not always bother or distract me. But in this case, I knew that it was getting in my head, that it was, that it was distracting. And I should have just gotten back up and waited until I had a, a clean sight on the shot. So I sell out the four ball. And again, the table's, table's getting in the way. I had to move my cues right behind my opponent there. And comes around. Uh, I think the intention was to go two rails to shape the six. Ends up coming thick into the nine ball and pushing it onto the six. And now probably the play is to stop the cue ball. Came a little too thin on the six. I think I probably would have stopped the cue ball right on the nine and send the, cue, the, send the six ball around the table like he did. Karam's not really on here to come off the six into the eight. It's kind of a tough position. You don't want to come off the left side of the six because you'll threaten a scratch. Coming off the right side of the six is the right play, but you just have to think about your speed. And again, yeah, you can see the table shaking. It's, it's really in the way. When you're queuing, the table height is right at where my queue is coming in. So make a good split on those, and I tried to basically just leave my opponent on the back side of the six. It's off the rail enough that uh, I think he considers the back cut here. Steps up pretty quickly, just goes for the back cut and fires that in. And it does not cooperate. And now this is the kind of run out that you, you set up these four balls on your table at home, you're going to get out, right? Because um, you're home and you're comfortable and you're, you're in your element. In a tournament, stuff's going to just feel a little weirder. But you got to know how to deal with those nerves. So I played a good line on that 7 ball. You can snip draw back out for the 8 because you want the 8 to bring you towards the 9. That's fine. We're pretty straight on the 8. You don't have to worry too much about this. Don't get cute. Pull back just a little bit to lengthen the angle. You just got to put this 9 ball away. Get on the board. Yeah, not clean, but, you know, it works. Put that one away. My opponent was checking with me about uh, whose, whose break it was. And there is a game missing from the footage. Or no, uh, the, the scorecard is wrong here. We're 1-1. One, one. The video shows the proper number of games, but the scorecard is wrong. So good cue ball here on the break, good center table position. Bring the one up along the rail. We have a lot of options on that three ball, but I don't think I really committed to where I wanted to go with the three ball. Now we ended up glued on it. We're frozen on that three, or maybe there's just a millimeter between the two. And you can look at this combination. It's not quite wired up. I would have to cut the three to send it into the six and make it. The problem is you're sending the cue ball wild, and you don't want to hook yourself to where you don't have a shot on the three. You can cut it down table or you can cut it up table. Um, either option felt like it was going to send the three in the right direction. You have to be mindful of your speed. So basically, you either commit to the combo and try to get shape on the three, or you commit to a safe and just send your opponent down table. I think the safe was down table. That's what I was looking at. And I didn't fully commit. I didn't go for the three enough. Because I think, again, the cue ball is tracking down table. I might have been worried about not getting shape on it. So I lay up an easy follow-up to that combo. Three sends you naturally over to the four. Draw back a bit, like pinch off the four to get on the five. This is looking fine. You want to think about where you want to be on the seven to get easily on the eight. Um, that can work. But he's, he's made a bit more work for himself than we needed to. Decides to draw straight back. And a pretty thin cut on the 8. 
Yeah. Undercut that one. Took too much of the ball. Leaves me long. Difficult decision on the eight ball here. Um, do you want to go offense? This is a cuttable ball, but the scratch is on depending on how you cut it. The other consideration would be how to play a long safe. And that is typically my first instinct in this situation. Where you come off the right side of the eight ball and leave your opponent behind the nine and kind of split them. Let's see what I decide to do. Yep, good speed, split them. I like that because the 9 provides a wide angle of blockage for the 8. There's a lot of room for the 8 to move up table to where the, your opponent won't have a hit on it. So he reaches for his jump cue. This is a pretty straightforward jump. It's made easier by the fact that you can bridge off the rail if you want. Give yourself a more of an angle on the cue. Easily gets clearance over the 9 and very nearly makes the 8. Really did not miss it by that much. And luckily, he didn't really sell out. He didn't leave anything easy on the eight. You could consider the bank back in the bottom left-hand corner. It's, it's risky. In this case, my first instinct is to safe him again. But I want to take away the jump option. So I roll through the eight and stick him on the nine. And I say, here you go, bud. You're not jumping this one. So one rail kick is available to here. That would certainly work out. Some players might naturally look at the one rail kick this way. Yeah, he's going this way. That's fine. But I think maybe pulled a bit of left spin on that. I'm not sure if it was intentional or not, but that, that running English is really necessary to get the hit on those. Um, so this game, if I win this one, it will put me up to two and it'll match the scorecard. But get good shape on the nine. Don't take anything for granted. Bear down and make that ball Get those points. I didn't want to overplay that and try to get cute and get super close to the nine. I certainly could have gotten more out of that. I think that's a confidence thing that I was trying to build in this match. One, two, three, and then shoot is working really well for me. And I come clean through that ball. My opponent's shaking his head. You know, he's, he's disappointed about having given away that game. Um, but, you know, I'm not sure he really sold out too much. Um... I played two good safes and was able to, to work through it. So yeah, now the scorecard is accurate. I'm up 2-1. Breaking on the hill. Or it's, uh, you're right, rack for each other in nine balls, so it's my opponent's break. So, good spread on those, but kind of lost his cue ball a little bit. And I believe he's got full access to the one. And that one, not really sure uh, if that was just a missed cut shot on the one. I don't really know if there's an advantage to trying to do like a two rail. <laughs> Shot up in the top left corner. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the thinking was there. But uh, lays up the one to get really naturally onto the two. And then I have to think about giving myself enough of an angle to float down for the four. And this is, again, do you want to take those multiple rails and open up your stroke? Or do you want to try to hold the cue ball? I'm trying to find the stroke. I'm trying to get confident. I want to get through this round, continue to win. And I got I to gotta open things up a little bit. Taking my line on the four. It goes in both corners. So basically, do you want to come into this two ball one rail? Or do you want to roll through the two ball and come to the other side? Either is very playable here. Yeah, so I come with a bit of right hand spin. I get a bit more out of that, or that uh, two ball shot than I would have liked. And now I have a more severe back cut. Getting above the four is ideal, right? Because then it sends you towards the six. So I've got a big back cut on the four. It's very makeable. The scratch in the side is on. If you end up coming around, the side pocket can come into play. So you need to think about adding some extra spin or some 
draw to pull away from the pocket. I'm queuing low and outside, but maybe not quite enough because, ooh, yeah, tracking towards the side. I got a roll. I got a good roll. That one was lucky. And so I started to look at, you know, what would be the angle that I wanted. It's really to come above the side pocket. You don't want to go below it and mess with the seven. So I've got a decision here. Pure offense would be to send the six ball up into this corner pocket. Defense maybe coming off this side of the six and put them up under the seven. I think the carom is playable into the eight, but you could put the six into kind of a junky position. So pick your plan and commit to it. And underplayed it just slightly. I didn't really fully hide the cue ball behind the seven. That might have been an attempt at a two-way where I make the six and I'm below the seven. If I don't make the six, then I leave my opponent in a tough spot. It worked out for me in this case because he missed the six. Now I'm in a very clean position here to run out the rest of this rack. And I think, again, we see the swing in the posture and the confidence and the presence at the table. I'm really bearing down and lining up, and you can see my opponent's kind of showing more of a give-up stroke and not a lot of consideration, not a lot of forethought. I haven't played against this person too much, um, but I certainly felt the swing. At the table, I felt the swing and the, the confidence. So clean roll through for the seven. And I leave myself a natural line on the eight. Cue ball digs into that bottom rail and floats up above the nine. Good simple out. Perfect speed, leave it on the rail. Opponent's shaking his head. He's, he's disappointed in his performance here. That is going to do it for this one. So we go shake hands. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for checking out this match. We made it through this next round. Let's see how deep we can go in this tournament if we end up cashing out or even winning this thing. So stick with it. See you guys soon.